So this is a little uh, slideshow that I put together about Greek and Roman art uh, that we read about in chapters 5 and 6 of our textbook, a little bit about Greek and Roman art. Uh, first of all, notice two qualities of ancient Greek art um, are the, uh, the beautiful human forms, uh, statues that look like uh, humans. They are muscular, they're toned. Um, you know, you don't see uh, Greek statues of ugly people. You see them only of uh, very well-formed humans. Uh, also, the uh, Greek uh, arts celebrated very realistic styles. In other words, um, fabric looked like fabric. Animals looked like real animals. Plants looked like real plants. Um, and these two uh, qualities of ancient Greek art uh, I want to demonstrate in the next slide. Uh, if you notice, for instance, at the portion of the Parthenon, which was an ancient Greek temple dedicated to the goddess Athena, and uh, looking at those figures, you can see that the fabric on the figures of the goddesses on the right-hand side, uh, that is solid marble, but it looks as if it's real flowing fabric. Uh, the musculature of the male figure uh, off to the left-hand side, again, very real. And on the very far left side of that Parthenon uh, piece, you can see uh, horse heads from a chariot scene, and they look like real horses. Um, now, if you're wondering, again, why they don't have heads or hands or feet, that's just a, a result of uh, 2,000 years of history. Um, uh, statues do have a tendency to break. Um, so they did have heads, they did have hands, and they did have feet. But, um, I mean, things do have a tendency to break uh, over 2,500 years. A lot can happen. Uh, notice on the uh, right-hand side of the slide, you have the Nike of Samothrace. The Nike, not Nike. Nike is the tennis shoe <laughs> that you wear. Nike is the Greek word for victory. And this is a statue uh, dedicated to uh, the goddess uh, Victory, uh, you know, almost like a, uh, a minor goddess, uh, the Nike of Samothrace. And again, look at how realistic the wings look, and look at the realistic movement of the fabric of the goddess's gown, um, these two qualities of, Gre uh, of Greek art. Um, we also see it in the three styles of Greek columns, uh, Corinthian, Ionic, and Doric. And uh, I took this picture. What you're looking at is a photograph from England. But in this photograph, if you'll notice, you actually can see uh, the three orders of Greek columns. Uh, each floor, each level, uh, has a, a style of Greek columns. So the first floor is done in Doric. The second floor, which has like the scrolls at the top of the uh, columns, that's called Ionic. And the third style at the top is called Corinthian. Now, how does this relate to Roman art? Well, Roman art admired Greek art. And so they adopted many of the characteristics of Greek art, such as the realistic human forms and the realistic style of fabric, animals, and objects. So, for instance... Um, what you're looking at on the left-hand side is uh, a bust of a Roman noblewoman. And uh, I took this from the Getty Villa out in uh, Malibu. Uh, they have this beautiful statue. And if you'll notice, look at how realistic her dress is. Look at how realistic her hairstyle is and the, the facial expression. And when you consider that this is over 2,000 years old, it's just uh, beautiful. Uh, on the lower right-hand side of the slide, that's a statue of Jupiter at uh, a little seaside town called Caesarea, and that is in Israel. So you see this statue of Jupiter, who was the head of the Roman gods. Um, now, again, as I said, these statues uh, have, some of them have lost body parts over 2,000 years. Uh, and so the statue of Jupiter at one point did have an arm and a foot and a head. But again, statues, when they're um, uh, very old, they do have a tendency to, to sometimes fall apart. Um, so I think you can see clearly that when it comes to the question of Roman art, they definitely drew their inspiration from the Greeks. Finally, uh, we're no strangers to classical art uh, in our own country. Uh, our own White House, uh, the 
nation's capital, uh, especially the Rotunda, and the Lincoln Memorial, among other buildings, they all draw their inspiration from Greek and Roman architecture.